in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I need to pay more attention for English. Christ is risen, hallelujah. He is? Yeah, that's the truth. This is the third Paschal Sunday. And do you remember the resurrection of Jesus as a historical event? Or do you experience the presence of the resurrected and living Christ that you could share with someone now? Jesus appeared to his disciples many times and in various ways after his resurrection, often at unexpected moments. He, the living God, also appears to us, to you and to me now. And if you think that it's only historical experience, you can experience real presence Jesus now. Do you believe for that? Would you like to experience his real presence now? Just uh, has this desire and ask him, I would like to meet you now again like a live God. He can do for us this uh, revelation now. Desire to experience his presence. Brothers and sisters, Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters. In what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, every virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Christe, Christe, eleison. Christe, Christe, eleison. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit. Show 
that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. P Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and the Righteous One, and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that he is Christ, would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a, a, a host. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a host does not have flesh and bones, as you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, while they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate, in, and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, this, It is written that the Christ would suffer and raise from the dead on the third day, and he repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witness of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am really happy that I can be with you today. These days, after the disciples first encountered the risen Jesus, are very dynamic. Joy is interwided with fear. The disciples has probably has uh, the, the disciples have probably never been so excited and moved so quickly as they do now after the resurrection. They cannot help but proclaim what they have seen and what and whom their hands have touched. 
the content of their strong testimony has survived to our times and that is why we know that Jesus was, is resurrected. Which word from today's readings touched your heart of broke your heart? The first two sentences from day, today's gospel inflame and fascinate me. And there are the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And during when I read this gospel, the last sentence touched my heart also. You are witnesses of these things. And now, why? Where did Cleopas and his companion meet Jesus? Where? On the way to Emmaus. Yes, exactly. And why did these two fly from Jerusalem? Fly from Jerusalem, because they were disappointed in Jesus' death. And then, in such a hopeless, sad, and fearful situation, at the last, at least at the least expected moment, Jesus approached them and began to explain the scriptures to them. And they don't know what this man is yet, but his presence and especially he, what he says moved their hearts and finally they recognized him by breaking in the bread. This experience, meeting the risen Jesus, was such an ex extraordinary experience that they could not leave it to themselves. They quickly ran back to Jerusalem to share the news with others. Jesus is risen. He is alive. And when they testified with passion and joy about their encounter with Jesus, he, the risen Lord, came to them again, stood among them, and gave them peace, once again he made himself known to them. He allowed them to touch him, asked them for food, proving that he was not a spirit, ghost, but he was resurrected in flesh, this announcing the resurrection of our body. Do you know why this word excited me, fascinated me, and fills me with joy? It shows where the resurrected Jesus is present, where he lives, where today you and I can meet him personally. So where does Jesus live? In the world, he explained the scriptures to them by the road, enlightening their minds to understand the scriptures, scriptures. In the Eucharist, they recognized him by breaking, breaking the bread, and all this happened in the community. That was dynamic, alive, and witnessing. And that is also our experience today. We have chance to one more, once more listen his word. And I already said to you that when I prepare this homily, the first two sentences make fire in my, made fire in my heart, but knew during reading this, also the last sentence touched me. And we can experience Jesus in his presence in the peace of bread, but also in the community. What is very fascinating about Christianity is that when you preach, you proclaim Jesus, 
With your actions and words, you bear witness to him when you are at the same time as a disciple and missionary, you are in the same time a disciple and missionary, he admits to you, lets you experience his living presence, his love and closeness. He makes for you and by you much more than you planned, does something you couldn't imagine, just like we heard today. The disciples told what happened to them, and during this community gathering, he came again and said, Peace be with you. While preaching, he comes. A few years ago, while, part while participating in evangelization at the Woodstock Festival, a man, a man approached me, and when he was sure that I was a real, real priest and not the disgusted, when he did good research, he started to shouting and talking in a very vulgar way about his parish priest, about his double dishonest life, about his infidelities and economic abuses. I didn't know how to react, how to behave. I remained silent and listened to him patiently. I realized that what he said about this priest could unfortunately be true. I was wondering and praying what to answer him when he finished. And when he finally allowed me to speak, I told him that teachings of Jesus about what to do when you see your brother doing wrong. First, go and lovingly admonish him privately. If he doesn't listen to you, take witnesses with you. If he doesn't change anything in his behavior this time, inform his superiors. It's about saving a person. You see a man, a priest, who is lost, you see his mistakes. With love and gentleness, help him get back on the right path. These were more or less the words I said to, his man, to this man. And you know that fact that I did not respond to his screams with shouting, but with gladness, which also surprised me very much at that time, where did I get such gentle, gentleness from, was probably nice. And that was the good reaction, not from me, but from the Holy Spirit working in me. But however, what was absolutely extraordinary was how the word of God spoken to him broke and opened his heart. Can you imagine when he heard the words of the gospel that I paraphrased, he started crying and talking about his life. Everything that this man accused this priest was really about him. That was his life and his experience. It was a story about his infidelities, betrayals, dishonest and broken life. He asked me for prayers and blessing. He really wanted to change his life. During this meeting, we both experienced the presence of Jesus, who lives in his word. I saw fulfilling what he announced, touching, moving, and changing hearts, but also strengthening my faith the faith of disciples. Yeah, this and other extraordinary experience of the presence of the living Jesus were immersed in the daily breaking of bread and listening to the word of God in the community of disciples. That is why, brothers and sisters, I am glad that we are here together to die today, now during this Mass, even if some 
of God's words are difficult for us to understand, to accept, to put in our daily life, the important thing is that we are here, we are open, we are listening to the word of God. Jesus makes himself, himself known to us. He shows us our hearts. He shows our way of thinking and sends us into the world to testify to his love for every person. May we always desire Jesus of the world, of the world Jesus present in bread and in community, and have the courage after this meeting here, when you listen and I am speaking, maybe you are a little bit passive now, but have the courage after this prayer to testify about Jesus. He will send to you people thirsty for his love. Be gentle, vigilant, and brave. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. And believe me, that you don't have to look for the people. He will send to you the people. Just listen and don't be afraid. Share your testimony, what Jesus did for you, and behave like the disciples from the gospel of today. Think about your personal experience, what Jesus did for you. Speak about it, and when you will be at work with this, he will come and he will multiply his grace, and because of that, I really like it to be Christian. Because even I have some plans, I prepared something for the testimony. When I am sent by him, he is doing much more beautiful things than I planned, than I expected. Even sometimes the things doesn't look, doesn't look like really nice, but in the end we can see that he is covered everything and he is leading us, guiding us, and he's blessed each one. Doesn't matter on which moment in our life we are, in spiritual life we are now. Everyone is in different moment of spiritual uh, life, but Jesus is with you in the moment when you are now allowed him to work for you, but also through you. You are witnesses of these things, about witness of resurrected Jesus. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all
rescues us from all our distress, so we bring our prayers with confidence. That the Christians who suffer for their faith may have courage. Let us pray to the Lord. that all missionaries may have the conviction and the zeal of the early disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That fishermen, farmers, and all who labor in the food chain may receive a just reward for their precious labor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the vision of heaven given in the scriptures may inspire the ill and comfort the dying. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our university chaplaincy may always be a house and a community where students and staff encounter Christ, source and cause of peace and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may join those gathered around the throne of the Lamb. Let us pray to the Lord. Virgin Mary to our common prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Lord, you listen and have pity on your people. Let your help guide us all the days of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O oh Lord, we pray, these gift, these offerings of your excellent Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in the perpetual happiness to Christ, perpetual happiness to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O oh Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more graciously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifice of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross and by the commanding himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your prize and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. 
this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and with us your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have killed us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gerard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your peace. Have mercy on us, on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and for mine by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sins, from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should under my roof, but only say to the Lord, so shall be healed. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia.
the, let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O oh Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in, the, the, in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. You are a really good community because you gather here, but this is not the end of this meeting. You are welcome also for the potluck today. And that is one more chance to enjoy and to share the uh, alive Jesus, resurrected Jesus. Let's do that in this place, but also outside, between the people when you will be sent it through Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Regina Celi, letare. Alleluia, vi acque meruisti portare, Alleluia, resurrexit, secud dixit, Alleluia. Virgo Maria, Alleluia. Quia surexit Dominus vere, Alleluia. Oremus, Deus qui per resurrectionem fili tui, Domini nostri, Jesu Christi, mundum letificare dignatus est, presta quesumus, ut per eius genetricem virginem Mariam perpetue gaudiamus gaudia vitae, Per eundem Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen.